The genetic landscape of modern Scotland represents one of Europe's most complex population histories, shaped by successive waves of migration, conquest, and cultural transformation spanning over 14,000 years. From the first hunter-gatherers who recolonised the land after the Ice Age to the medieval kingdoms that forged Scottish identity, each population movement has left distinct genetic signatures that persist in contemporary Scottish DNA. When the massive ice sheets that had covered Scotland for millennia finally retreated around 12,000 years ago, the barren landscape was gradually recolonised by small bands of hunter-gatherers moving northward from southern Europe. Archaeological evidence from sites such as Cramond near Edinburgh and the shell middens of Oransay in the Hebrides reveal sophisticated coastal foraging economies that exploited marine resources with remarkable efficiency. These Mesolithic peoples represented the first sustained human presence in post-glacial Scotland, establishing population continuities that would endure for thousands of years. The genetic profile of these early Scots has been reconstructed through ancient DNA analysis from comparable Mesolithic sites across Britain and Ireland. These populations carried what geneticists term Western hunter-gatherer ancestry. Characterized by distinctive maternal lineages, including mitochondrial DNA haplogroups, U5 and U4. These ancient maternal markers, particularly U5, represent some of the oldest European lineages, tracing back to populations that survived the last glacial maximum in southwestern European refugia before expanding northward as the ice retreated. The paternal genetic signature of these early inhabitants was dominated by Y chromosome haplogroup I2, another ancient European lineage that had deep roots in the continent's Paleolithic populations. The cultural legacy of these first Scots was necessarily ephemeral, consisting primarily of sophisticated microlithic stone tool technologies and the massive shell middens that accumulated over generations of intensive coastal exploitation. Their languages remain completely unknown to us, though they almost certainly spoke early forms of pre-Indo-European hunter-gatherer tongues that have left no trace in the historical record. These populations lived in small mobile bands that followed seasonal resources across the landscape, developing intimate knowledge of Scotland's rivers, coasts and uplands that would form the foundation for all subsequent human occupation. Around 4000 BC, Scotland experienced a demographic and cultural transformation that would fundamentally alter its genetic composition. Continental European farmers, carrying the revolutionary package of agriculture and animal domestication, began migrating into Britain and Ireland, bringing with them not only new subsistence strategies, but also radically different genetic ancestry. Ancient DNA studies reveal that these Neolithic peoples carried substantial Anatolian farmer ancestry representing populations whose ultimate origins lay in the Fertile Crescent, where agriculture had first developed thousands of years earlier. The genetic impact of this Neolithic migration was profound but incomplete. Rather than simply replacing the indigenous Mesolithic populations, the incoming farmers mixed extensively with local foragers, creating hybrid populations that combined Western hunter-gatherer and Anatolian farmer ancestry in varying proportions. This admixture process introduced new maternal lineages, particularly mitochondrial DNA haplogroups H, J, and K, which became increasingly common in Neolithic Scotland. The paternal genetic landscape also diversified considerably, with Y chromosome lineages, showing greater variety than would be seen in later periods. The cultural legacy of these Neolithic farmers remains visible across Scotland's landscape in the form of spectacular megalithic monuments. Sites such as Scara Bray in Orkney, with its remarkably preserved stone houses and sophisticated drainage systems, and the towering stone circles of Callanish in the Hebrides, demonstrate the architectural and astronomical sophistication of these early agricultural communities. These monuments were not merely functional structures, but represented complex ritual landscapes that encoded sophisticated understanding of celestial cycles, and seasonal changes crucial to agricultural success. The linguistic affiliations of Scotland's Neolithic farmers remain enigmatic, though they may have spoken early forms of Indo-European languages or their immediate precursors. The question of when Indo-European languages first arrived remains one of archaeology's most contentious debates, with some scholars arguing for Neolithic introduction alongside farming, while others favour later Bronze Age arrival with subsequent population movements. What seems clear is that the Neolithic period established cultural traditions of communal tomb construction, distinctive pottery styles, and ritual monument building that would influence Scottish culture for millennia. 
perhaps no population movement in Scottish prehistory was as genetically transformative as the arrival of Bell Beaker associated peoples around 2500 BC. Originating in the Lower Rhine region of continental Europe, these migrants carried not only revolutionary bronze working technologies, but also a genetic signature that would fundamentally reshape its population structure. Genomic studies have revealed that this migration resulted in a near complete replacement of Neolithic paternal lineages, with Y chromosome haplogroup R1b, M269, particularly its Atlantic branch R1b, L21, achieving overwhelming dominance that persists in modern Scottish males. This genetic transformation was accompanied by the introduction of substantial steppe ancestry, derived from pastoral populations of the Pontic Caspian grasslands, who had domesticated the horse and developed sophisticated bronze working technologies. The cultural changes accompanying this genetic transformation were equally dramatic. The communal burial traditions and megalithic monuments that had characterised Neolithic Scotland gave way to individual burials, often accompanied by bronze weapons, tools, and distinctive bell-shaped pottery vessels that give the culture its name. A new social order emerged, characterised by warrior elites who accumulated bronze weapons and exotic goods through long-distance trade networks stretching across Europe. The linguistic implications of the Bell Beaker migration remain debated, but many scholars argue that this period witnessed the definitive establishment of Celtic languages in Britain. The genetic continuity between Bell Beaker populations and later Celtic-speaking Iron Age societies suggests that the foundations of Scotland's Celtic linguistic heritage were laid during this Bronze Age transformation. The R1b L21 lineages that achieved dominance during this period would become closely associated with Celtic-speaking populations across Atlantic Europe, from Ireland and Scotland to Brittany and northwestern Iberia. By the Iron Age beginning around 800 BC, Scotland had become home to sophisticated Celtic-speaking societies that represented the culmination of Bronze Age cultural development. Genetic studies demonstrate clear continuity from the Bell Beaker Bronze Age populations. With maternal mitochondrial DNA haplogroups H and U, this genetic stability provided the foundation for remarkable cultural flowering that would define Celtic Scotland for nearly a millennium. The Celtic societies of Iron Age Scotland were almost certainly speakers of Goidelic languages, the branch of Celtic that would eventually give rise to Irish and Scottish Gaelic. These languages had likely evolved from earlier Bronze Age Celtic dialects, developing distinctive features that differentiated them from the Britonic Celtic languages of Wales and Cornwall. The linguistic landscape of Iron Age Scotland was probably more complex than often assumed, with regional dialects and possibly distinct Celtic languages in different parts of the country. Culturally, Iron Age Scotland witnessed the flourishing of Latin-inspired artistic traditions that produced some of Europe's finest Celtic art. Elaborate torques, decorated weapons, and intricate metalwork display the sophisticated abstract motifs characteristic of Celtic artistic expression. These artefacts demonstrate not merely local craftsmanship, but participation in wider European Celtic cultural networks that stretched from Ireland to the Black Sea. The artistic traditions established during this period would profoundly influence Scottish culture for centuries to come. Classical writers, particularly Roman authors, provide our first written glimpses of Scottish societies during this period. Tribes such as the Caledoni, who would later give their name to Scotland itself, were described as fierce warriors who successfully resisted Roman attempts at conquest. These accounts, while filtered through Roman perspectives and prejudices, suggest complex tribal societies, with sophisticated political organisation, warrior traditions, and religious practices centred on natural landscapes and seasonal cycles. Despite repeated military campaigns and the construction of massive fortifications such as Hadrian's Wall and the Antonine Wall, Rome never succeeded in permanently conquering Scotland. This military failure had profound genetic consequences, as genomic studies reveal very limited Roman or Mediterranean genetic input into Scottish populations, compared to the substantial continental ancestry found in southern Britain. The fierce resistance mounted by Scottish tribes not only preserved their political independence, but also maintained the genetic integrity of their Celtic populations. The limited genetic impact of Roman contact stands in stark contrast to other regions of the empire, where Roman colonisation introduced substantial Mediterranean ancestry. In Scotland, genetic continuity from Iron Age populations remained essentially unbroken, with only trace amounts of non-Celtic genetic markers entering the population. This genetic isolation was accompanied by cultural resistance, as Scottish societies maintained their Celtic languages, 
religious practices and social organisation despite centuries of Roman pressure. The languages of Roman period Scotland remained Celtic dialects, possibly representing the ancestors of both Pictish and Gaelic. Roman writers occasionally recorded Celtic words and names, providing tantalising glimpses of linguistic diversity within Scotland. These fragments suggest that while Celtic languages dominated, there may have been significant dialectal variation across different regions and tribes. The preservation of Celtic linguistic traditions during the Roman period would prove crucial for Scotland's later cultural development. Roman contact did introduce certain material culture elements, particularly through trade networks that brought Roman goods deep into unconquered Scottish territories. The Picts, first mentioned in Roman sources and dominating northern and eastern Scotland from the 3rd to 9th centuries AD, represent one of European archaeology's most fascinating populations. Despite centuries of scholarly speculation about their origins, recent genomic studies from sites such as London Lynx and Ballantor have definitively demonstrated genetic continuity with Iron Age populations rather than foreign intrusion. The Picts were not exotic immigrants, but represented the direct descendants of Scotland's Celtic Iron Age inhabitants. Ancient DNA analysis has revolutionised our understanding of Pictish society by disproving long-held theories about matrilineal descent and foreign origins. The genetic diversity found in Pictish cemeteries shows typical patterns of patriarchal societies with both local and more distant maternal lineages, contradicting classical accounts of unusual inheritance systems. The cultural legacy of the Picts remains visible across Scotland in the form of their distinctive symbol stones, which represent one of early medieval Europe's most remarkable artistic traditions. These carved monuments, found primarily in eastern Scotland, display a unique iconographic system featuring abstract symbols, animals, warriors and Christian crosses. The evolution from purely Pictish symbols to Christian motifs on later stones reflects the gradual Christianization of Pictish society while maintaining distinctive artistic traditions. The Pictish language remains one of Celtic studies' greatest mysteries. While clearly Celtic in affiliation, Pictish appears to have possessed distinctive features that set it apart from both Goidelic and Britonic languages. Place name evidence suggests possible pre-Celtic substrates in Pictish, though these remain speculative. What is certain is that Pictish gradually gave way to Gaelic during the 8th and 9th centuries, as political and cultural power shifted toward Gaelic-speaking dynasties from Western Scotland and Ireland. The expansion of Gaelic culture across Scotland represents one of the most significant cultural transformations in Scottish history. Beginning in the 5th century AD, settlers from Ireland brought Old Irish into Western Scotland, establishing kingdoms that would gradually extend their influence across much of the highlands and islands. This Gaelic expansion was not merely a political conquest, but involved substantial population movement that introduced Irish genetic lineages into Scottish populations. Genetic studies reveal that the Gaelic expansion involved genuine demographic movement rather than mere elite dominance. Irish mitochondrial DNA lineages appear in increasing frequencies in Western Scottish populations during this period. The linguistic transformation was more complete than the genetic change, as Old Irish evolved into Scottish Gaelic and spread across much of the highlands and islands. This process involved not merely the introduction of a new language, but the development of distinctive Scottish Gaelic literary and oral traditions. The bardic schools that emerged during this period created sophisticated poetry, genealogies and historical narratives that preserved Scottish Gaelic culture for centuries. Simultaneously, Viking raids beginning in the late 8th century introduced a dramatically different cultural and genetic element into Scottish populations, particularly in the Northern and Western Isles. Norse colonisation of Orkney and Shetland was so extensive that these islands developed essentially Scandinavian populations, with genetic studies revealing overwhelming Norse ancestry in medieval and later populations. The cultural impact of Norse settlement extended far beyond genetics, as Old Norse became the dominant language in Orkney and Shetland, leaving extensive traces in modern place names throughout the islands. Norse legal systems, social organisation and artistic traditions transformed island cultures, creating hybrid Norse Gaelic societies that were unique in medieval Europe. The Kingdom of the Isles, which emerged from these cultural fusions, represented one of medieval Europe's most successful examples of cultural synthesis. The medieval period witnessed profound changes in Scotland's lowland regions through Anglo-Saxon and Norman influences that created the linguistic and cultural duality that characterises modern Scotland. The expansion of Northumbrian Anglo-Saxon kingdoms into southeastern Scotland during the 7th and 8th centuries 
introduced Old English dialects that would eventually evolve into Scots, creating Scotland's distinctive Germanic linguistic tradition alongside its Celtic heritage. Genetically, these medieval transformations had surprisingly modest impact compared to their cultural significance. While some English genetic markers entered Scottish lowland populations, the overall genetic structure remained fundamentally Celtic. The resilience of Scotland's underlying Celtic genetic structure throughout these cultural transformations demonstrates the demographic strength of established populations. Norman surnames and cultural practices became established among Scottish nobility. The linguistic consequences of these medieval changes were profound, creating the distinctive situation where Scotland developed two major linguistic traditions, Gaelic in the Highlands and Islands, and Scots in the Lowlands. The Highland clearances of the 18th and 19th centuries represented one of the most traumatic periods in Scottish history, displacing hundreds of thousands of Gaelic speakers and fundamentally altering Scotland's demographic structure. These forced migrations, driven by agricultural modernisation and political repression following Jacobite uprisings, created vast Scottish diasporas across the English-speaking world, while concentrating remaining Highland populations in marginal coastal areas. Genetically, the clearances had the paradoxical effect of both dispersing and concentrating Scottish genetic lineages. The massive emigrations to Ulster, North America and Australasia carried distinctive Highland genetic signatures to new continents, where they often maintained genetic isolation through endogamous marriage patterns within immigrant communities. These overseas Scottish populations sometimes preserve genetic characteristics that have become diluted in Scotland itself through subsequent demographic changes. The distinctive population history of Scotland has created unique opportunities for medical genetic research while raising important questions about health disparities and genetic disease patterns. The founder effects and population bottlenecks that characterise Scottish demographic history, particularly in island populations and highland communities affected by the clearances, have concentrated certain genetic variants that influence disease susceptibility and drug response. Research in Orkney and Shetland has been particularly valuable for identifying genetic variants associated with complex diseases. The genetic origins of the Scottish people provide not merely an account of population movements and cultural change, but a profound example of how human communities maintain coherence and identity across millennia of historical transformation.